then the second effect that I think we do have enough time for is um, something called the length contraction, or sometimes we call it Lorentz contraction, after the guy who uh, originally derived that expression. And I guess um, uh, this is probably the good setup to use. In this, uh, let me erase a bunch of stuff that was not correct. So once again, there's no such thing as an ether wind. So let me erase that. Um, so no ether wind. And speed of light doesn't change as it's traveling. So uh, well, let me just make up some space here. And we'll use this setup for um, length of contraction. So let me erase this too. So I want to actually use this uh, Michelson Morley apparatus to um, to drive the second expression about length of contraction. So here's the thing. Uh, if well, let's see. So this is what I want to be able to enforce. This is trying to make our theories so that um, so that it agrees with the experimental result that no shift of interference fringe was seen. There's no apparent difference in time of round the trip this way and round the trip this way when this entire apparatus, um, let me erase this too, when this entire apparatus is moving this way with the speed of v. Yeah. Um, so, well, but just for reference <laughs> from what I got confused with earlier. Once you say apparatus is moving that way, the ether wind is going the other way. Yeah. Okay, so, um, uh, so let's uh, say, um, and what you will find is if we simply say that, um, um, so this portion of the arm acts like this clock that we just derived. So if uh, while it's at rest, if uh, it took this round trip time of, you know, tau is equal to 2d over c, then as this is moving, the round trip time of this will take, um, take more time by this factor gamma. So instead of this tau, the, uh, as it's moving at speed v, the amount of time it takes will be gamma times tau. Now, this is what I want to enforce. I want to enforce that the round trip time of um, uh, along this arm to take the same amount of time as this. So that when they come back, recombine here, then there shouldn't be any interference fringe because they um, all come back at the same time. So let's try to figure that out. Um, so I'm going to stay in my own, um, I guess. Uh, so let me um, set up my observers this way. A is the observer who's traveling with my Michelson interferometer. B is the observer who stays here and just looks at things passing by. And from the perspective of B, uh, let me erase this, because this was the ether in the stuff. Um, from the perspective of B, this is how things appear. Let me draw the things on the top, which, um, which is just a copy of this. So from the perspective of B, um, as the light travels up, the entire apparatus moves over. So it, um, this moves over here, um, this moves over here, light hits here, and by the time light comes back, this whole thing moves over here, and light comes back here, and um, after the light, let me draw this V up here. Mm. So by the time light gets to this here, and it bounces back this way. Good. All right. Um, 
Let's see. All right, that seems okay, right? That's what B would see um, here. Now, let me be careful here. So I'm not going to try to do any comparison at um, these two points. So for A, these two events, call it C and D, they happen at the same time. For, but I have a nagging suspicion that for B, it probably won't happen at the same time. Because it's two events separated by some distance, like with the train example. So I'm going to wait until those two lights come back to the same point to compare them. So when they're happening at the same point in space and time, then I'm reasonably sure that it'll happen simultaneously. It's like, you know, when this ball is dropping and like same ball dropping at the same point, well, it's gonna happen with the, at the same time with itself, no matter <laughs> in what reference frame you're looking at it. So, so let me do the calculation. So I know the, the 12 round trip time for this, round the trip time for round the trip time for the upper arm is t is equal to gamma times, um, call it 2d over c. That's what we did with the time dilation. That's kind of why we had to do the time dilation first. And let's uh, try to figure out how much time this, um, this round trip should take. And we will um, say that wh whatever round trip time this takes must be equal to this. Okay. So, Let's see. I guess I need to figure out some geometry. Um, so in the time that the light reaches here, let me call that, um, let me call that T1. So, so this happens at time T1. Uh, the mirror moves by some distance. And that distance should be V times T1. Seems reasonable, okay. Um, and so that's not it. I mean, that's not the total time. There's the return time. So in the time that, uh, let me call the amount of time or the, the time stamp at which light reaches here, let me call that T2. So this T2 is uh, from zero all the way to this moment in time. Um, this apparatus has moved this distance. This distance here, oh. um, um, so that must be speed of V times T2. Good. All right, I think that's all the geometry I need to figure this out, right? So, all right, um, the total travel time, let me call it, I guess I can call it T, it should be the same as this. So let me, total travel time T, is equal to the time, um, I guess that should just be T2. So, you know, T2. And let me rewrite it this way. It's a T1 plus T2 minus T1. Okay? And I can figure out T1 based on geometry. So um, at time T1, this has happened. The, um, the apparatus moved forward by this distance, or the mirror moved forward by the distance, and the light, which is our measuring stick for a lot of things, light has traveled the distance of d plus this. So let me say, um, so, so light has traveled d plus, um, V T1, that's the distance that the light travels, so that's the distance, so that's equal to um, speed of light, C, times T1. Distance light traveled, distance light traveled. Yeah. And uh, I just want to warn you, uh, in case I run out of time, uh, we are going to get a little bit of contradiction, and when we run into that, we'll have to make a little correction. So, all right, so let's keep going. So 
Um, I can solve this for T1. In fact, let's do that now. Um, I'm not making any. Okay, okay. So if I solve for T1, T1 is equal to, move this over. So C minus V divided out. So T1 should be D divided by C minus V. Everyone good? Okay. And I can figure out T2 minus T1 as well. So the light is starting from this point. So um, it's traveling this and the distance of the um, this d plus v t one minus um, this. So the distance that the light is traveling, that is this distance here. That uh, um, so this whole thing, d plus v t one minus this bit here. V times t two. Good. And that should be equal to speed of light times t2. Notice how I'm using the same speed of light for both uh, portions of round trip. It's, uh, what is it because of? Yeah, second postulate of special relativity. It, so you know, if uh, anything else is confusing, at least this, uh, you can get speed of light is constant AC. Like, um, once again, I hope everyone eventually has an understanding of what that really means, but at least you know the correct answer, and you can understand it later, um, if necessary. Okay, so let me, uh, wait, wait, C times, not T2, it's a T2 minus T1 is the actual amount of time that the light spends. Good? All right. Um, oh, actually, let me rewrite this this way. I think this will make my algebra a little bit easier. D minus V times T2 minus T1. Good. That's the left-hand side. So that means um, I can move this over. So I have actually C plus V. And when I divide it out, this is what I get for uh, T2 minus T1. T2 minus T1 is equal to D divided by C plus V. Okay, um, let's plug these in, these two expressions into up here and see what we get. I'm just gonna move back here and write those expressions down. So total time t is equal to um, that d divided by c minus v plus this, plus d divided by c plus v. Let me combine the fractions. So when you combine the fractions, you get, um, so product of these two, c squared minus v squared, like you saw before. Okay, let me factor out d times, so c plus v plus c minus v V's cancel out like before. I have two C, so you end up with, this is equal to two D times C over C squared minus V squared. Let me do a little bit of um, uh, uh, factoring that I, similar to what I did before. I'm going to factor out a factor of C um, on the denominator that doesn't really exist. Um, so it's uh, like, so let me do it in two steps. Multiply top and bottom of this um, uh, fraction by one over C. That makes the numerator one and the denominator C minus V squared over C, right? And I'm going to factor out this C from the denominator. Then I get this C here. So this turns into one. This doesn't really have a factor of C, but I can still factor out a C by turning this into square. Okay? So this becomes one. So with all those corrections, this is what it is. 2D over C times um, one over one minus V squared over C squared. Hmm, that looks familiar, right? That's uh, gamma squared. So let me just uh, do that. So this is equal to gamma squared. And this is where you run into a 
little bit of contradiction. This is the expression we are trying to get to. That total time of travel is gamma times 2d over c. Um, I have total time of travel is 2d over c. All right, so far so good. But I have gamma squared. What did I do wrong? So let me save a little bit of time. Math-wise, I didn't do anything wrong. My algebra was fine. <laughs> so what it is is this d turns out to change. For, this, for, for us to be able to enforce this experimental requirement that these two light beams arrive here at the same time, turns out the only way to make that true is by allowing this length to change. It's such an um, unintuitive thing. It's like somebody telling you that this ruler is 30 centimeters long, but when it's zooming by you, it's going to be shorter than 10 cent 30 centimeters. If it's moving at, I don't know, I don't know the actual num remember numbers. Let's say it's moving at uh, 3 quarters of speed of light, then instead of 30 centimeters, it's a 15 centimeters or something like that. And, but, well, that's the only way to make this consistent. Uh, make this consistent with this and still not abandon the second postulate of special relativity. So you know what Sherlock Holmes said, once you eliminate the uh, impossible, whatever remains, however improbable must be true, that's that thing. So what we haven't, what no law of physics tells you is that, that this length must be the same in all inertial reference frames. That's what our intuition says it is, but I told you from the beginning, your intuition is wrong. And there's no law of physics that says that the length does not change when you are in different inertial reference frames. So that's what I'm going to do. So let me make this correction. Wherever I had a d before, it's going to become d prime, uh, new length. And I'm going to, I'll make that new length, whatever it needs to be, so that this expression will be equal to um, 2d over c times gamma. That's what it must be equal to. So let me, uh, so this is the d I'm going to keep as d. <laughs> so let me uh, track down all the other d's. That's d prime, 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 prime. I guess that's all I have to do. I mean, I can prime all these, but it's implied. All right, so let's figure out what this d prime is. Um, I can cancel out 2c, 2c. I can cancel out one factor of gamma. So I get d prime. So that's the length of this arm from the perspective of B. D prime is equal to D. Um, so let me give it this D a name. The same way I gave the name for the time kept by the clock in its own reference frame, I can call this D proper length. It's the length of whatever object it is in its own reference frame. So the proper length of this ruler is 30 centimeters, no matter what reference frame you are in, because when I say proper length, I mean the, refer the length measured in its own reference frame. Okay, so that's the proper length. So d prime is equal to this proper length divided by gamma. Okay. So, so that, that must be true, because I have laws of physics constraining what I can do. I have experiment telling me that these two light beams must arrive at the same time. And I have a second postulate, second postulate of special relativity that tells me speed of light cannot change on return trip. The only thing I can change is this. So that's going to change. Yeah. So this is what we call length contraction uh, or Lorentz contraction. So this is uh, length contraction. And let me just end with uh, length contraction. For the sake of symmetry, let me end with the same phrase or similar phrase as what we had for time dilation. For length contraction, we say moving rulers are short. Moving rulers are short. 